In this video we're going to learn how to find a vertex using the completed square form. If you haven't already done so I'd highly recommend watching my first two videos on how to complete the square, otherwise some parts of this video may be a bit confusing. I'll put links to those videos in this video's description. Let's begin then, so we're asked to find the coordinates of the vertex of the graph y equals x squared minus 6x plus 11. Now a vertex is just another name for the turning point of a graph. It's the point at which the graph changes direction. This could be a maximum point, or it could be a minimum point. To start this question we're going to write down the equation of the graph again, but then on the right hand side we're going to complete the square. The left hand side can just stay as y, so we have y equals, on the right hand side, a bracket squared, the coefficient of x is currently negative 6, so we'll half that to get negative 3. We can then subtract the square of that, so if 3 squared is 9, so take away 9, and then we have the 11 from the previous line. We can then simplify the last two terms, negative 9 add 11 is positive 2. We've now written this in the completed square form. But why is this useful, and how does it help us find the vertex? Well to answer those questions we're going to plot the graph. I've selected a table of values for x from 0 to 6. We'll substitute in those values to work out the corresponding y values. So if we start with x equals 0 first, then write the equation, we can substitute the x for a 0. So we have y equals 0 take away 3, which is negative 3, squared, which is positive 9, and then add 2, which is 11. So if x equals 0, y is 11. Let's try x equals 1. Write the equation out again, and substitute x for 1. This time we have 1 take away 3, which is negative 2. Then we square it, which is 4. And then we add 2, which is 6. So if x is 1, y is 6. Let's carry on with x equals 2. This time we would have 2 take away 3, which is negative 1. Squared, which is 1. 1 add 2 is 3. So if x is 2, y is 3. Let's try 3 now. Now this one's particularly important, watch what happens. If we substitute x for 3, we get 3 take away 3, which is 0, and then 0 squared, which is 0, and then 0 add 2, which is 2. So if x is 3, y is 2. Then if x equals 4, we substitute 4 in, 4 take away 3 is 1, 1 squared is 1, 1 add 2 is 3. So if x is 4, y is 3. If x is 5, 5 take away 3 is 2, 2 squared is 4, 4 add 2 is 6. So if x is 5, y is 6. And finally, if x is 6, we end up with 6 take away 3, which is 3, 3 squared is 9, 9 add 2 is 11. We can now plot these points as coordinates on a graph. If we start with the left hand side, when x was 0, y was 11. So this is the coordinate 0, 11. I've marked that on the graph here. We then move along and we have 1, 6, and then 2, 3, and then 3, 2, and then 4, 3, and 5, 6, and finally 6, 11. So we end up with a lovely quadratic shaped graph. If we join that up with a smooth curve, it would look like this. So we can see that the vertex has coordinates 3, 2. So that must be the answer to our question. But this seems like an awful lot of effort to go to each time. Isn't there a quicker way? It turns out there is a better method. And if we look back through our steps, we'll be able to spot why. So we know the vertex is at 3, 2, which is right at the bottom of our graph. Because it's at the bottom, it must have the lowest y coordinate. If we look back at our y coordinates, you can see that 2 is the lowest y value. But why is 2 the lowest y value, and where does it come from? Well, if we go back to the equation, we're able to answer this. The equation is made up of two parts. The first part here will always be a square number, since it's something squared. The second part will always just be add 2, that can't change. Now square numbers can never be negative, because when you square any number it turns out positive, or 0. So the lowest possible number from the first bit is 0. Then we add 2 to get 2, so it makes sense that 2 is the lowest y coordinate. But what was the x coordinate that gave us that? Well, if you remember when we substituted in the values, 3 was the key value, because 3 take away 3 was the one that gave us 0. 0 squared was 0, and then we had 0 add 2. If we look at the completed square form, we can very quickly work out the vertex. To find the vertex, first of all look at the bracket part. We want this bracket part to be 0, because then we're at the lowest point possible. 
To make it zero, you want to make x the opposite sign of the number within the bracket. So since the number within the bracket is negative 3, we'll make x 3. If for example it was negative 10, you'd choose 10. If it was positive 5, you'd choose negative 5. And the last part, we take the final term here and that will be your y coordinate. So if it's plus 2, it's just 2. Let's try some more examples like this. I've already written these in the completed square form and we're just going to very quickly find out the vertex. So for the first one, look at the number in the bracket, that's a plus 4, so we take the opposite sign, negative 4. But then we take this positive 6 at the end and keep it the same. For the next one, the number in the bracket is negative 5, so we want a positive 5. And then we take this 3 here at the end. For the next one, the number in the bracket is negative 2, we want the opposite sign, so a positive 2, but we do keep this negative 1 at the end. And for the last one, it's a positive 7 in the bracket, so we want the opposite sign, a negative 7, but we'll keep this negative 9 at the end. We'll now try two questions in full. So we're trying to find the coordinates of the vertex for each of these graphs. The first graph is y equals x squared plus 8x plus 18. Remember the strategy here is leave the left hand side as y, but complete the square on the right. So we'd have y equals bracket squared, we'd half the 8 to get 4, we'd then square the 4 and take it away, and then keep the 18 from before. We can then write the next line, but simplify the last two bits, which would give plus 2, and we've now written it in the completed square form. So the vertex will come from the opposite sign of this number, so negative 4, and then keeping this number as it is, 2. This next graph is a little bit tricky. Notice we have a negative x squared at the front. This graph, if you drew it, would actually have a maximum point as the vertex, and there is a slightly different method needed for this question. The first thing we're going to do is write a large bracket, and then we're going to factorise negative 1 out of each term. So put a negative in front of that bracket, and then inside the bracket we're going to write each term again, but with the opposite sign. So instead of negative x squared, we'll write positive x squared. Instead of negative 2x, we'll write positive 2x. And instead of the positive 4, we'll write a negative 4. We can now focus on what's inside the large bracket and complete the square there instead. So if we write y equals negative bracket, we can complete the square inside the bracket. So we have another bracket, half the coefficient of x, so that's a 2, which gets us 1. We can then subtract the square of that, so take away 1, and then keep the negative 4 from the previous line. And then if we simplify, this negative 1 take 4 will give us negative 5. What we now need to do, and this is a point where people could make mistakes, is put that negative bracket back in. It's a bit like multiplying through by negative 1. So we have negative 1 times this bracket, which is just negative the bracket, and then negative 1 times a negative 5, which gives a positive 5. And the positive 5 is definitely the place where most people make mistakes. We're now ready to find the vertex. So in the same way, We'll look at the bracket and choose the opposite sign of this number. So instead of positive 1, it's negative 1. And then the final term, we'll just keep that as a 5. So that's the coordinates of our vertex. There's one more type of equation we need to be able to find the vertex of, one that looks like this. Notice there's now a number in front of the x squared, a number 2. We did find out in our previous videos that you can complete the square on this, although it is a little bit tricky. So let's go ahead. The first step was to factorise the first two terms. So we'll write y equals, and then we'll put 2, because that's the coefficient of x squared, and then a large bracket. We then factorise this, so it would be x squared, since 2 times x squared is 2x squared, and negative 6x, since 2 times negative 6x is negative 12x. And then of course, we can still just write this plus 13 at the end. What we can now do is complete the square on what's inside the brackets. So we'll write y equals 2, a large bracket, and then we'll complete the square. So completing the square here, we're half the coefficient of x, so half of negative 6, negative 3, and then we can square that and subtract it, so negative 9. And again, this 13 goes at the end. What we're now able to do is expand that 2 back through, so it's 2 times this bracket, which gives 2 lots of the bracket, and then 2 times negative 9, negative 18, and of course there's still a plus 13 at the end. We then simplify the last two terms, so y equals 2 bracket x minus 3 all squared, and then negative 18 plus 13 is negative 5. It's now in the completed square form.
To find the vertex, we'll use our same strategy as before. Look for the number in the bracket, that's a negative 3, so the opposite of that is a positive 3. And finally, there's a negative 5 at the end, so we keep that. Thank you for watching this video, I hope you found it useful. Check out what I think you should watch next, and also subscribe so you don't miss out on future uploads.